Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Honesty. I just want to say thank you so much for clicking and thanks for tuning in. Now, before I get started, I want to say I am a Vikings fan, but I'm not a fanboy. I know the Vikings got extremely lucky. They honestly shouldn't have won that game. Drew Brees had an amazing performance in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. I just want to say this video is, is only to address the facts and make some educated guesses about the tackle, uh, uh, why did it happen, if, if it was actually rigged, and what the Minneapolis miracle means to the people of Minnesota. Now, the Minneapolis miracle is specifically the last second throw by Case Keenum and Stefan Diggs to give the Vikings their first playoff win since 2009. Now, since 2009, they have made it to the playoffs both wildcard but were eliminated in the first game both times. Now in 2012, the Vikings went 10 and six with Christian Ponder, Adrian Peterson, and Percy Harvin. In the final game of the season week 17, they were playing at home against Green Bay. Adrian Peterson needed 208 rushing yards to break the single season rushing record and came nine yards shy. He was offered to run the ball to break the record, but chose to kick a field goal to knock the Giants out of the wildcard spot. Then they moved on to the wildcard game to play Green Bay in Lambeau the next week and lost 24 to 10. Then in 2015, they go 11 and five with Teddy Bridgewater, Adrian Peterson, and Stefan Diggs. Qualify for the wild card and going to play Seattle in the third coldest game in NFL history and lose by one point from a missed 27 yard field goal from Blair Walsh. And uh, that's, that's pretty much about it. And in 2010, they were 6-10. In 2011, they were 3-13. In 2013, they were 5-10. In 2014, they were 7-9. I mean, this team kind of suffered for about a decade. On top of embarrassing playoff losses, they suffered from multiple quarterbacks, um, several injuries, different head coaches. I mean, this team really went through a lot in the span of a decade. And that special play, that Minneapolis miracle, wasn't only just to win the playoff game, but it ended with seeing like another string of cursed playoff games for the Vikings. Now, why did it happen? This is where the educated guesses come in since no one really knows but Marcus Williams. I believe the Saints defense were very emotional and desperate throughout the game and Marcus Williams just wanted a big play. Now, he, he did have a big play. Granted, it was on that just horrible toss up from Case Keenum, but I think that he wanted that big play, that big hit on Diggs because he got beat on a couple plays. He was late on a couple plays. And in terms of Marcus Williams versus Stefan Diggs during that divisional game, there was so much tension and animosity. Like if you were watching, I think it was pretty obvious. Like even if you weren't watching and you went back on the highlights, I can definitely show you guys a couple plays where that kind of trash talking transpired. All right, check out this third and seven. You see Keaton just drop back, take a step forward, dump it off to Diggs. He makes a quick move. It's a pick up a block by McKinnon and just gets tackled. Now Marcus Williams gets up, goes right over to his face and starts talking. Just like that. Now in this play, we're even later in the game. This is fourth quarter, not too far along from when he missed that tackle. Quick screen to Diggs, and you see when he gets pushed out of bound by Williams, they start talking again. And if you're watching this game, if you ever recorded, I encourage you to go back. They were shit talking for like 30 seconds. Diggs has to actually hand the ball off to the referee and walk away before you know it gets real serious. But Williams and Diggs were going at it the entire game. Like that level of animosity and and kind of just anger between them just didn't dissolve. All right, check out this play in the fourth quarter. You have Thielen running a fly route and Jarius Wright go outside and Thielen ends up dragging Marcus Williams up the field a little bit and he's too late to reach Jarius Wright. And if you check out the replay, you'll see just Thielen just burning down the field on the upper right side of your screen and then that just carries Marcus up a little bit. And he's unable to stop this huge play which sets up a Viking field goal. Those are one of the things that, that gets to a rookie, especially in the playoffs. Now, Last play, late in the fourth quarter, you guys probably remember this, huge play by Adam Thielen, but check out who's just late, Marcus Williams again. <laughs> when the game is on the line, Marcus Williams is just slightly, slightly off. His timing was at least one or two seconds off, and I feel like this is one of, these are the things that, that stays in his mind throughout the course of the game, especially with a minute 53 left or a minute 51 left. He's going to remember that. So when Diggs is in the air, it's not just that situation. It's things like this, where there's big plays that he's blown, where if he was just a little bit faster, he might have had more of an effect or just put the Saints in a better position, and he just fell short. Now, with all this in mind, none, none of this is to, to say Marcus Williams is a bad player by any means. I know he had a great rookie season. I am not narking Marcus Williams in any way, but knowing all of this and after kind of reviewing the game a little bit and especially some of the interactions between him and Diggs, 
Now, check out this final play. There's, of course, other possibilities and things he could be thinking about, like no interference. Of, of course, he's a nervous rookie in the, in the playoffs, or maybe he was just overthinking, but he had so many options. He could have stopped and wait. He could have wrapped him up. He could have played the ball. Everyone knows that. These are things you're going to hear from every sports channel. But it's clear, seeing how he's playing, seeing his interaction with Diggs, that he wanted to hit him. He wanted the big hit. He wanted to beat him on the day. And you're not going to find a lot of people understanding that he wanted to go for that big hit. I found a couple people on Twitter, people talking about it. Some people peeped, some people <laughs> peeped game and saw that he really wanted the, the huge hit. And the first, first interview I saw or the first discussion I saw after the game was, of course, from Deion Sanders, who hit it right on the nail, explaining how he wanted to really beat him and not do what was necessary to win the game. And of course... I try to stick away from people who don't really play football, like getting the perspective of people who are actually on the field. And check out Deion Sanders. He says it best. Let me tell you what most, 95% of all defensive backs, and this is real talk, LT, they play not to get beat. It's only 5% of guys out there play to make a play. Right then, he was playing not to give something up, not to go make a play. And see, that's the difference that separates dogs from cats, man. You, in that position, in that time, man, go make the play. And uh, they, there you have it. Deion says it really in a nutshell. He just didn't want to get beat. I think he wanted to lay that big hit down on Diggs. And I think he just didn't want to make the play that was necessary. I mean, he had so many other options. He could have done anything else, anything other than what he did. But at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. Now, for the last topic, and probably the most controversial is, is, was it rigged? And for my opinion, no, it wasn't. Now, the reason I think this is, well, well first, let's just define rig. Like the, the definition of rig we're using, according to dictionary.com, is to manipulate fraudulently. So for someone to manipulate an NFL game, it would have to be owners or, or people betting or someone invested in the team monetarily that would want to manipulate it for money or viewership. For example, I think late this season, the Patriots and the Seals were actually playing and fighting for a top C, I think for that first round bye. And we had the Patriots versus the Bills. And during the middle of the game, the Bills went up a score and it got overturned. One of the TDs got overturned horribly. And if you want to talk about rigging a game or leaning in favor of a team, I don't think there's anything kind of more disgusting than this getting overturned. You should check this out. Yes, I've seen a touchdown signal from the far the, side official. The wing official on the far side, right on top of the ball, signal touchdown. It's a blitz by the Patriots. There's a lot of contact. The ball is caught. One foot down. He dragged the second foot. He dragged foot. the second foot. He goes to the ground, and it is a touchdown. The official's right on top of it. Every scoring play is reviewed. The booth will take a look at this. The ruling on the field has been changed. It is an incomplete pass. I, I think that's a Three terrible call. Down. That is a terrible call. Not because they didn't confirm it, but how do you overturn that call? That is absolutely terrible by the folks in New York. Yeah, I think that's rigging. That is fraudulent manipulation in my opinion just clearly taking the td from a player just from a team and you might be asking like how does that relate to money or views well if you check out forbes list on what teams are actually valued as the patriots are actually second in value out of all the teams in nfl and the bills are uh yeah, dead last. So if you want to talk about uh, fraudulently manipulating a game for money or for views, I think uh, the choice would be very obvious here. Now, we can kind of shift back focus to the Saints and the Vikings. Now, if you look at their past, this looks like the past 16, 17 years. Look at the revenue generated from the Saints versus the Vikings. It's very clear to see the Saints beat the Vikings in revenue almost every year besides it looks like 2005 and that, that that might be it i mean it's it's incredible you would definitely want to go with the saints if you were going in for the long run and want to see a team in the super bowl and especially with drew Brees coming back next year i mean the storyline would be a lot better revenue wise if you were to invest or lean toward the saints now like i said i'm a fan but i'm not a fanboy 
so I do have to admit that the Vikings were favored by 5.5 points is a bit suspicious with the miraculous digs touchdown that would have covered the spread exactly and then they would have won their bet if you did bet on the Vikings so I think it is a bit weird that on top of the 90 million dollar spike in revenue even though they did just get US Bank Stadium that's a large part to you know to do with it but Either way, I still think it's a bit weird. And also, I think if someone was really trying to make sure they won or if it really was rigged, they definitely would have forced Minnesota to actually kick a field goal instead of just taking the knee if it was about the betting line, which makes me think it really isn't about the betting. It would be about the revenue. And obviously, you see the numbers. Investing in the Vikings in terms of revenue wouldn't really be smart. I mean, they don't. The, the top jersey seller on that team is Diggs, and I think he's like 40th. I mean, the Vikings don't really generate that much revenue. They're not a really popular team. The Saints have the bigger fan base. I, I really think that, you know, the Saints really would be the better team to rig a game for in terms of the Saints and the Vikings. And I don't think Marcus Williams threw that game at all. Like, I, I really don't believe so. But if you guys think so, if there's someone out there that's a hardcore Saints fan or you just can't believe that Marcus Williams can miss such a wide open tackle like that with so much on the line, just let me know. I'll leave some of these links down in the description and I'd love to hear from somebody who thinks that it's actually rigged. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully my next video will be about the Vikings going to the Super Bowl. So thanks so much. You guys have a great day.